We're back at DJ's compound down in Wrens. It's hot, humid, and awful. I got my arch rival Josh Haddon here with me. We're hitting a couple laps on the parking lot loop. We're going to warm the bikes up and get ready to have a fun, miserable day. At this point, I just suffered my like third flat tire on the KTM in a month. <laughs> it's still in the garage at this point, and we are breaking out the redheaded stepchild, the YZ250F. It is a fantastic problem to have two bikes and not enough time to ride both. I do adore the Yamaha, I just feel a little more at home with the KTM. I think I'm a little partial to two strokes. But every time I hop back on the Yamaha, I'm reminded of how much I love it. Switching back and forth between the Yamaha and the KTM, I feel like is maybe a much better all-around rider. When I first started racing here at Scrambles, uh, the Yamaha was my primary bike, and I had a really hard time adjusting to racing that in tight single track. I found I would stall all the time, but since riding the two-stroke, I think I have better throttle control and clutch control, and I'm just a, a generally smoother rider now, so I don't have many of those issues that used to plague me when I first started riding this thing. During an elongated period of neglect and abuse of the Yamaha, my map switch was broken. So I am stuck in the hard-hitting map on this thing, and the bottom end is almost uncontrollable. This thing is flying every time you give it a little bit of gas. So it's kind of like wrangling a ball. I primarily ride hard packed clay just from riding at Dirt Town all the time. So, switching to riding some sand, it's a nice change of pace. I think it'll help you improve uh, having to fight through this loose sand as opposed to just riding on a, a concrete highway. Josh recently invested in a four-wheeler, so he's spending even less time on two wheels, even though he's still displaying his skills. I want you guys in the comments to berate him and make him feel bad for making that switch. Josh has a secret he doesn't want you to know. He used to be a wheelie boy. He used to be one, but he still has two. been reluctantly peer pressured to spend some laps on the moto track. Whatever minuscule moto skills I used to have have definitely regressed. Not as comfortable as I used to be out there, but we're going to go ahead and try to keep up with Josh, maybe send some big boy jumps. One saving grace about DJs is the track is all sand, so if you do have a catastrophic failure, you're kind of landing on a pillow compared to asphalt. <laughs> there were a bunch of super fast dudes riding with us today and we kind of let them go ahead and, and spin their laps and try to get out of their way but now they've gone and left so now it's our turn to look like some squids out there and Jackson's man with the camera so hopefully he can get some good photos of us as I'm becoming less awful of a dirt bike rider, I'm realizing I'm honestly in love with the Yamaha. I, <laughs> I really enjoy both the bikes I have. Since I got the KTM, I've raced that exclusively. I haven't raced another bike in any event that I've signed up for. So I'm thinking maybe some of the routes around too. Maybe give it a try. The one downside to the Yamaha is that it takes forever to start, and everybody I know that owns a YC250F with a button says the same thing. 
I don't really want to invest in a new battery. I just want to rock with what I got. So that'll put me in a little bit of a handicap, but in a two hour race, I think we could probably make some moves happen and, and do pretty well on this friggin' thing. Here we go, karate kicking trees. I just didn't even attempt to turn. It just, uh, just kind of happened naturally. Chad Reed Jr. here falls into a hole, lets me catch up with him, so let's see if we can put some pressure on and make him sweat a little bit. One thing I've noticed that makes DJ such a wonderful place to train is that there's a bunch of loops on this property, so you get to run the same circuit over and over again. You get a little more comfortable with uh, certain things you struggle with, whether it be a, a turn or a jump or a section that's rooty. You can just hit it over and over and over again until you get more comfortable with it and learn what the heck you're doing. I think it'd be a lot of fun in the future to kind of have someone keep track of lap times. You're able to sprint and push yourself because you're not riding 12 miles to go to a place you want to ride like a Durham town. You're just kind of hitting the same thing and you get to take breaks. So I think doing some time trials would definitely help progress a little bit. I've done a bunch of laps and I'm trying to consolidate these videos so they don't have a 47 minute video nobody wants to watch. I'm trying to keep these short and sweet. Josh pulls off here and he's got a lovely surprise for me when we come back around. Is that a full moon in broad daylight? It must be the goddamn eclipse! Why'd you, why'd you quit? It actually resembled more of a waning gibbous. His pants could have been down a little more. But after witnessing that, we're off to play some limbo. Some sadistic Johnson wanted to set this up for us so it could feel pain. All the fast guys were out in the woods hanging out, so we took the opportunity to, while we're doing limbo, kind of incorporate the oval track and a little more of the, our, our track section into this loop and get some more practice in. I wasn't lying about that throaty bottom end. For a bike that has almost 80 hours on it with not a single valve adjustment, it still runs pretty good. Almost high sided there. There will be plenty more fails to come. <laughs> we 
Weenie Boy hit me with a mouthful of roost. Thank you. <laughs> Try to stand up, and then I was like, no, I'm gonna put my leg up. That didn't work out. Y'all get ready, this is going to be the best one yet. I'm going to show off in front of all the fast guys, show them what I got. Ah, close? Damn! This is on 13? I ain't going to give up. I'll look stupid, but I ain't going to give up. Dedication, baby. <laughs> I'm close a lot. <laughs> hey, which way you want to do it? What? Which way you want to do it? I want to go uh, Enough of limbo. We're on a more other dangerous things. This is a squid convention, dude. Make it look easy, don't I swear to God. I do. It feels a lot smaller when you're on it. Yeah, this this looks small. <laughs> it's crazy how they do it. All right, you gotta get right here. <laughs> All right, you all right? Yeah. <laughs> We got the figure eight death trap here. DJ says it is a breaking exercise, but I think it's more for getting at your frustrations and running into somebody and hurting them. Second time out riding. <laughs> Had to give Josh a fist bump and congratulations for besting me on the figure eight loop of death. But here we are out on the other unnamed loop, trying to get some pictures and video of us hauling sheep.
All in all, a pretty freaking awesome day at DJ's. Definitely got some training in, had some fun with some buddies, got some good videos and pictures, and next time I'm there, hopefully this Saturday, I'll be bringing the KTM. Let's see what we can do on that thing. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you next time.